international transformation and success coach Myrna Morris-Young delivers life-changing strategies as the host of the Mindset Transformations radio show and podcast. Myrna shares these strategies from success achieved in her own personal journey and by interviewing other best-selling authors and coaches. Each show gives you practical tips on living your best life now by changing your mindset to change your life. I am grateful that you have tuned in today from all over the world. I believe that the Spirit of God led you here so that you can receive insight, revelation and knowledge to see the next step in front of you as God reveals his purpose and destiny in your life. And now, here's Coach Myrna. Welcome to the Mindset Transformation Radio Show. I'm your host, Coach Myrna. And today we are speaking to Dr. Sheila D. Williams. Dr. Sheila Williams is going to be talking to us today about the topic, Nothing is Impossible, Turning Life's Challenges into Opportunities of Self-Discovery and Personal Success. So stay tuned. You are in for a treat. Now, in keeping with the theme of my show, um, I always like to start off by giving you a tip of the week that coincides with my guest. So since we are going to be talking about nothing is impossible and self-discovery and personal success, I wanted to give you a tip of always finish the race. Don't be a quitter. I was in church a couple of Sundays ago, and the pastor had a very very nice message. It was the topic, go all the way through. Come all the way through. Don't stop in the middle. Don't turn back. Just come all the way through. You see, life is like a swim trip. You can't stop in the middle of the lake or you will, or you will sink. You either keep going or you turn back. So let's say that you are a distant swimmer. You set out on a journey to swim across Lake Ontario, for instance. You know, I lived in Toronto for a while, and people were always swimming the lake, so I chose that one. The trip is going to take you two days and two nights. You start out, and after about 30 hours or so, the weather gets bad, the waves are high, you start to cramp up, you have a decision to make. Do you quit? Do you turn back? Or you keep going? Now, remember, you're in the middle of the lake, so you just can't stop. <laughs> you have to turn back, get out of the water. So that's exactly how life is. When you begin on your journey to achieve your goals, you can't predict the weather. You can't predict the storms that are going to be coming your way. And you know they will come. So what you have to do is make a decision up front to keep going no matter what. Come all the way through. You see, God planted that dream in you for a reason. He has something for you to do, and he will stay with you all the way through. So just keep moving forward, even if it seems like you're just threading water. Going back is debt to your dreams. <laughs> so I hope you got some a little bit of encouragement from that. You know, the word always reaches you at your point of need, so maybe it came to you right as you were thinking, like, life is really hard, that I want to quit. But it does get easier. So now let me tell you about our guest. Dr. Sheila Williams has been has over 20 years of successful professional experience. She's an independent consultant with her company, SW Consultant Services, LLC, a mental health therapist counselor, a behavior analyst, a published author, life coach, and educational director. She also has an extensive educational background a BA in psychology with a minor in sociology, an MA in counseling, and a PhD in leadership and education. 
After caring for her mother, who suffered from clinical depression and multiple, multiple cirrhosis, Dr. Williams decided to pursue her education and career in the mental health field. She remained in the social service industry for over 10 years. She then saw the correlation between at-risk students in social emotional disorders and decided to make the transition to higher education administration. By doing so, she served as a catalyst for educational reform and sees every day as an opportunity to touch someone's life in a positive way. Having dealt with the responsibility of caring for her mother who had depression and having once been told by her high school guidance counselor that college was not for her, she would not take no for an answer. Dr. Williams turned what could have been a challenge into an opportunity to prove that yes, you can. Dr. Williams has a natural love for life and finds joy in helping others to reach their fullest potential. She believes in taking adversity and turning it into an opportunity to propel oneself to the next level. Dr. Williams is an avid reader and enjoys traveling, writing, researching, and spending time with her family and friends. She often is encouraged by those who can't believe her story So with that, she decided to write her autobiography. In her first book of its three-part series, My Mother's Keeper, Dr. Williams gives you an introduction into her life, the mystery, the challenges, and the truth behind what motivated her to persevere and accomplish all the things she set out to do. It has been suggested and now has become a goal that her book, and life story be made into a docu- documentary. Dr. Williams continues to write, serve as a life coach, and a motivational speaker. Her second book will be released in 2017, and she's working on the completion of her third book, a children's book. Dr. Williams continues to live her life as an inspiration to others. Well, welcome, Dr. Sheila Williams. Welcome Thank to the Mind to Transformation. <laughs> Welcome to the Mind to Transformation show. I am very impressed with your accomplishments, and I'm also very, very impressed that you try to make a difference in the world and um, is inspired to do so. <laughs> so Thank awesome. you. You're very welcome. All right. So let's dive right in. Now, um, I know you you have a, a really you know, powerful story. Um, but let me ask you, your first book, My Mother's Keeper, what is the book about and what inspired you to write the book? Well, the book is about my mother. It is um, a very candid look into my life and me caring for my mother. It uh, it took me about, well, it took me definitely 40 plus years to get to the point where I finally decided to tell my story. And in telling my story, I also tell my mother's story. Uh, It was um, not initially uh, something that we spoke about to keep a family secret, but we did not talk about the fact that my mother had clinical depression. And uh, I find that so many people in, you know, my professional and in my personal life may be dealing with things that they choose not to talk about for one reason or another. They choose not to disclose it because they may feel like they are the only ones who are dealing with this. And that's the way that I felt for a very long time in my life. And so at the point where I decided to go ahead and be very candid and very transparent about my life, It was for the purpose of healing, not only for myself, but for anyone else who has dealt with anything that they may have been ashamed about or maybe felt that someone was going to judge them about or maybe even look at them differently if they disclosed these things. So I feel that, um, well, I felt that at that point it was uh, necessary for me to tell my story 
to be a source of hope and healing for so many others who may be experiencing something similar or maybe something totally different, anything that is keeping you from uh, being able to move on or being able to live your life fully may be a hindrance to you. So that is why I decided to be very transparent about my life. And rather than put it all in one book, because obviously we go through different stages and different experiences within our lives, uh, Mm -hmm. I decided to write specifically about my mother and her uh, clinical depression and me as a small child and, you know, a young woman and then into adulthood, how I I, how I dealt with it and how I, you know, um, was her keeper. I cared for her from a very young age. Yes. Oh, wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. That is a powerful story. And as I listen to you, you know, it's <laughs> I, I can't help seeing the similarities to my life and my story. Um, mm-hmm. But, you know, it's, it's, very, it's very interesting. Um, you know, I wrote a book called Out of the Snares, A Story of Hope and Encouragement. And I, too, was very transparent. I, too, talked about things that I never talked about. Yeah, uh, my situation was being sexually abused as a child. And I talked mm-hmm. about that in my book, and I talked about a couple of other things that I felt that I was being ashamed about. And, you know, my, uh, the reason I wrote mine is so that you can clean the slate. Um, right. Not, you know, it. people always get inspiration from somebody that has gone through something and succeeded and now look where you are. Of course, you're a doctor, you've been, so they look at your story as a story of success and it's glad, you know, the fact that you were sharing and you showed them the dark side and how there could be light. But the other Mm -hmm. way, um, the reason that I did mine is so that in order for God to work with you, um, you have to get rid of all that stuff. <laughs> you know That's what I mean? And, and mm. <laughs> you have to get rid of all that stuff. You have to be transparent. You have to put it out there. Because that's if true. you if you feel ashamed of it, then the devil uses that. Right? That's so true. And that's basically what I did. And in, 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 in how I wrote my story, it touched so many people. Everybody that reads my book is touched because as a woman and as a child and the things you go through, relationships and all that stuff, Everybody can identify with certain parts of it, and and exactly. uh, and I and I and I and I absolutely love it. And transparent is the word that they use. So, congratulations on that. And we all know. Thank you. That, <laughs> and we all know that God gives you a test for a testimony. So that's the cliche version of it. But mm-hmm. um, yeah, mm-hmm. He doesn't give you a test so that you you know you keep it to yourself. You you share it with others and you give them hope and encouragement, which is part of the title of my book, um, Hope and Encouragement. So that's awesome. Um, I think you touched on this briefly just now, but. Um, how difficult was it to be transparent um, about your life and your family's secrets and in the taboo subject of your mom's mental illness? Well, I tell you, I have been transparent with every other aspect of my life. Uh, well, I should say most other aspects of my life other than this, which is a very um, large piece of my life. Obviously, it's my mother. So, mm-hmm. you know, it it was difficult in the sense that I could not write the book without obviously including other members of my family and mm-hmm. um, talking about a topic that not only affects, you know, affected my mother, but it affected me and it affected everybody else that was in, you know, that's a part of mm-hmm. my family. So, you know, it, it comes with a bit of... Um, you know, uh, maybe I shouldn't do this. Maybe, maybe you know, I would play it safe and not do this. But I felt that I had been playing it safe for 40-plus years. And uh, it was time for, again, not only my healing, but the healing of others. And after I wrote the book, I realized that I had done the exact thing that I should have done. At the very moment that I should have done it was when I did it. So I always awesome. tell people at the very at the very moment that you are in, the very place that you're in in your life, that is absolutely where God wants you to be right then and there. Oh, that is so, awesome. sure. so, yeah, so mm-hmm. I, I, it was difficult at, at times, but uh, in the process of writing it, but then once I was done, I knew it was like a sense of relief that it was exactly done at the, at the moment that it needed to be written. Yeah. You know, as you're talking, I also get a word, courageous. Because you have to be courageous to go against 
you know, your your inner safeness. <laughs> you know, right. you, have to, you have to put it out there and, and be courageous. So, yeah, that was a courageous thing to do. And after you have done it, then, yeah, you feel invincible. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, thank All you. right. Well, um, we are going to take a quick station break, and we're okay. going to be right back with Dr. Sheila. Stay tuned. Mm-hmm. Welcome to Mindset Transformations Radio Show with your host, Coach Myrna. Do you feel the need to do more with your life? Are limiting beliefs holding you back from true success? Enjoy a unique blend of interviews, discussions, and transformation coaching in every show. Get the tools for success. The Mindset Transformation Radio Show with your host, Coach Myrna. Welcome back to Mindset Transformation Radio Show. I'm your host, Coach Myrna. And today we are speaking with Dr. Sheila D. Williams. And Dr. Sheila was telling us in the first segment of her show why she felt the need to write a book that will give others hope and encouragement while being transparent to her family issues and dynamics. So, um, you know, she was telling us that um, God wanted her to write this book, and um, as she wrote it, that she realized that that was the exact thing to do. So as we go into our second segment, we are going to dive a little deeper, and um, I am going to ask you, what did you hope to accomplish from writing your autobiography? I know you mentioned um, you know, earlier in one of your, your – um, in the first segment, that you wanted to, it took you 40 years to decide to do it. So what exactly did you want to give the people that are reading, your audience that is reading your book, with your story? Yes, like you mentioned before, uh, you know, people will often see you whether professionally or personally and they'll see uh you know maybe the home that you live in or they see uh you know the the doctorate degree or the position that you hold uh with the company you work for or uh you know they see the success they see um you know the success and all the things that you have accomplished but they don't realize behind the scenes anything that you may have gone through the obstacles Mm -hmm. The trials, the, you know, every the test, the te- You know, we have mm-hmm. testimonies from these tests that we have mm-hmm. in life. So, you know, I had not actually shared my testimony, and uh, you know, I I have had people in different professional settings say to me, whether it be clients or students or uh, you know uh, colleagues, and they say, well, you know, Dr. Williams, you wouldn't understand. And I say to myself, if they only knew, you know. So it's very, uh, you know, much along the lines that you hear the cliche or you hear the phrase, don't judge a book by its cover. So, you know, you see someone with the professional title and you see these accolades and all of the things that they've accomplished, but you have no idea the struggle or the obstacles in which they've had to overcome to get to where they are. So... Mm-hmm. I, I wrote the book for numerous reasons, and one of the reasons was because of that, to see the accomplishments that I have made, but then for you to understand what propelled me to get to the point where I am now and what encouraged me, where did I receive this hope from, obviously from God, but what was the fuel behind me wanting to accomplish one thing after the other? So in spite of all of the trials and the tribulations, the obstacles, all of the tests, then to see my success, it holds a little bit more value. And you are then more appreciative to understand, wow, she worked four jobs to pay for her doctorate degree and Mm -hmm. while simultaneously caring for her, you know, mother who was terminally ill. Uh, That puts a little bit more of an understanding behind, wow, she got her doctorate degree while still doing all of that. So, you know, uh, to, to show someone that even in the midst of the trials or the tribulations, you can still accomplish whatever goal that you have, um, you know, whatever it is that you're trying to achieve, you can still accomplish those goals. 
Oh, wow. That is powerful. That is an extremely powerful statement that you just made because most, you know, let's, let's, let's you know, put it in a little box. You know, there's mm-hmm. single mothers out there that have to do so much and they don't have the spirit to do it because they think that, you know, that that's just your burden. But here wow. you're saying that you looked after your mom, which is just like a, a, a mother looking after her children, <laughs> and you worked four jobs, and you still did it. So mm-hmm. I'm going to ask a question. So what was your motivation? How did mm-hmm. you find the strength to push through? Did you have a vision? I mean, what was, mm-hmm. what was your – why did you persevere? It was a combination of things. First of all, you know, from a very young child, uh, when you have, uh, you know, at four, five, six years old, we did not know that my mother had clinical depression. We just knew she was a little bit different than, uh, you know, I knew she was different than the other kids in the neighborhood. Moms, you know, they were very, you know, other parents were very outspoken. And um, my mother, at day, some days she would not get out of bed. Uh, other days, you know, she would not uh, open the blinds. It was dark in the home. Uh, some days she she was not. So, you know, you, you know about depression. Some days are, are good days and some days are not so good. So mm-hmm. without it being appropriately diagnosed, uh, you know, there were a lot of days that were not good for her. And with that, uh, that's one way in which I delved myself into my education was reading and uh, okay. to keep myself busy that way, reading and writing and just, you know, at a very young age, um, just becoming, you know, that overachiever. I I really Mm -hmm. enjoy education. uh, Mm -hmm. And, you know, I just want, the more I learned, the more I wanted to know. And it just continued um, up until, you know, high school and then into college. And then it was just like kind of a natural uh, progression. Um, Yeah, so you have this quest for knowledge, and I had the quest for accomplishment. So it was, okay, I got a B, and now I want an A. And I have an A, and now I want to be in an honors class. And now I'm in this honors class. Can I do dual enrollment and go to college while I'm in high school? So it was, uh, you know, just one thing after the other. And um, so it continues. Um, even <laughs> even now, it still continues. Uh, you know, so it, wow. it, the, the thing was that obviously I knew that my mother, obviously my mother and my father, they loved us, all of, our, all of their children. They loved me, and I loved them just the same. So there's a point where you want to obviously make your parents proud, but then there's also the mm-hmm. intrinsic motivation where, you know, you want to – you know, I wanted to accomplish these things for myself. I wanted to, uh, you know, find, uh, you know, personal and professional accomplishment from the goals that I had set out for myself. But then even in such, every uh, position, every, um, you know, thing that I do, I find much joy and accomplishment in helping others. So even in writing the book, I write the book Mm -hmm. for anyone as I put um, in the book, that I, I write the book for anyone who is in need of healing, anyone who is going mm-hmm. through anything. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I, I think that it is, well, I know that this is in the Bible where it says, um, you know, it's more blessed to give than it is to receive. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. as we give, in our giving, we receive blessings from mm-hmm. the gifts that we give. So in every, you know, the, the mental health counseling field as well as the education field, which have been my two uh, fields of expertise, in both of those fields, I am constantly giving. And in the giving, I am then being blessed. So that has been the, the entire the moral of my entire life, my ent- entire being. And for that, I am blessed. Okay, that is awesome. So you're one of those beautiful children that all mothers want to have. <laughs> you were self-motivated. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> you, were, you were self-motivated from a child I was. to be an I overachiever. Was. Wow. That is, mm-hmm. you know, is that overachiever word, you know, I was in sales, and um, uh, 
the you know sales managers are all looking for the overachiever the overachievers <laughs> because it is a characteristic <laughs> right and, right um it is a characteristic and um apparently you have been blessed with it so right. that well, that was awesome so great mm-hmm. love that love that story and of course Thank yes you. um you know when you give and you find it being your purpose you give and um then you do receive, you know, uh, right. and uh, you're planting that seed, and it comes right back to you. It's just a beautiful thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Well, um, it's very interesting. You you mentioned something earlier about um, you're writing the book about you and your mom, but there's also mm-hmm. some family members that was involved in the book. Um, uh, did you receive any backlash from any of your family members for putting your story out there, you know, you wanted to be transparent, but maybe your brothers and sisters didn't feel that way. How did they respond to your book? Um, not really. Uh, you know, I tell the story from my perspective. So, okay. you know, I always tell people that you have to understand that, you know, you can have three, four, five people experience the same or, or witness the same thing. But the experience for those three, four, five people could most likely be three, four, five different experiences. So you will ask them to say, write, or even verbalize what it is they saw, what it is that they actually experienced. And more than likely, you will get three, four, or five different stories. So this this is my autobiography, and this is my life and my relationship with our mother. And, of course, my father uh, partially is in this book, but uh, mainly my mother. So these are my experiences, and the, this is the way in which I saw and experienced, and this is the way in which I verbalized what I experienced. So if you were to ask my brother or my sister to write their autobiographies, they may be quite different. So Mm -hmm. I did not receive very much backlash at all, quite honestly, because they understand that it is my perspective and these are my experiences. So I'm I'm thankful for that. Mm -hmm. Wow. You know, a lot of people are not open to that. Um, right. Because they always want to judge and they want to criticize, and it's it's very interesting. But I was looking at an episode um, yesterday with Melissa McCarty, um, and she's writing a book um, regarding her husband's um, two sisters, <laughs> and one sister is telling the story of doom and gloom and horrible and the other sister saying, that's oh, wow. not true. I didn't <laughs> that's not true. None of these things happened. I had a glorious childhood. What are you talking oh, wow. about? And it's, 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 it's very interesting. And you're very, right. a lot of people don't understand that. They would say, right. hey, you know, my even my even my husband, you know, he's totally different from mm-hmm. brothers and sisters. And he would say, "Well, we all grew up in the same house. We both had the same parents. How can one right. person be this way and the other person be?" And they don't understand. It's all it's all separate. It's your experiences, right. and you mm-hmm. and you um, experience things from your own soldiers, right? Right. And, um, right. and uh, not a lot of people feel that way. They feel that if you grew up in the same house, you had the same parents, then you should have the same experiences and, and the same um, views about it. So, right. it's very good. So you, you guys mm-hmm. are, um, are more um, in, a, in a higher spiritual plane than those. But good. Awesome. Mm-hmm. All right. So um, you are, are you currently working on any um, other projects? I know you mentioned briefly a minute ago that you're still an overachiever. <laughs> I am. I am. <laughs> I forced so myself to turn it off. To, you've gone all the way to PhD. So what's above that? What's more for you? <laughs> well, I'm I'm really into the writing right now. So I okay. have another book, the second book in my three part series of this autobiography that I'm doing. the The second book is uh, more so about my father. Uh, so mm-hmm. that is a very interesting book with a totally different, uh, pers- you know, different spin because uh, my relationship with my father is a bit different 
than the relationship that I had with my mother. So uh, that will be very interesting. And that one will be out in the spring of uh, 2017. And, um, of course, you read in my bio that I am also working on a, chil- a children's series as mm-hmm. well. Mm-hmm. Yes, okay. but the, the next book will be out in 2017. And, of course, I continue to do the speaking, uh, motivational speaking engagements. I just did a uh, breast cancer uh, a speech at a breast cancer banquet last weekend at the University of Central Florida in Orlando, Florida. And then uh, this weekend, I will be speaking with the National Association of Professional Women uh, here in Atlanta. So I stay busy nice. with those speaking engagements. Mm-hmm. I belong to that organization. That's who um, yeah. wrote my sponsored my book, my book Out of the Snares. So that is that is oh, nice. awesome. <laughs> Thank yeah, you. Thank that you. Is, that is great. Um, so you um yeah so you are a motivational speaker. You have your own business. You're the CEO of Selfless Consulting. Um, mm-hmm. How have you been able to accomplish all this in spite of the obstacles and challenges that you have faced? I know you 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 touched on that briefly. Do you right. can you expand on that a little bit? Yes, you know um, I'm one of those people that you know if I'm not doing two, three, four, or five different things simultaneously, I kind of get bored. <laughs> Wow. And, you know, I've been doing it for so long now that yeah. it has become, oh, you know, goodness. second nature for me. Yeah. 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 Four jobs, huh? <laughs> yes, I worked, I worked four jobs. At times it was three, but there, well, there was a point wow. that there were four jobs in there when I was, because oh, I didn't goodness. want to have student loans or anything like that. So I oh, paid okay. for my doctorate degree out of pocket. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, wow. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Very, very interesting. I'm pretty sure that you have a lot to offer in, in, a, in a, a motivational speaker in a conference. But I know Thank there was you. something I wanted to ask you a minute ago. You mentioned that your um, your relationship with your father is very different. I know um, mm-hmm. I'm uh, I haven't read your book, My Mother's Keeper, but you know I can I can um, you know because spirituality is something that, you know built with intuition. So I think I can understand that relationship and, and caring and, and whatever. So um, mm-hmm. you want to give us a little taste of how your father handled your mom's depression and how that affected the chemistry in the house? Or Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, I will say that, you know, with the clinical depression with my mother, it affects uh, every individual, you know, differently. So mm-hmm. uh, a bit of her personality was that she was already, uh, you know, just an introverted, introverted person. So uh, she was, you know, a little shy. So with her Mm -hmm. clinical depression, that took that uh, introversion to another level. So she did Mm -hmm. not have a lot of um, friends outside of the home. She didn't, obviously, didn't talk very much. She had uh, no um, activities that she really was engaged in. Uh, But my father was a social butterfly. So he had hundreds of friends, yes. (laughs) Complete opposite. I did not expect that one. <laughs> yes, complete opposite. Uh, he, he talked often. He was a jokester, uh, and he had a lot of friends, very well known in the community, uh, very um, active in the church. Uh, so, yes, very, very outspoken man, yes. <laughs> hmm. So, mm-hmm. obviously, when I'm getting again, intuition wise, his wife's illness did not affect him much um it affected him as well in a different way uh it motivated him to uh definitely want to and i speak about it in my in my mother's Mm -hmm. keeper um he wanted to make sure that she was well taken care of so he and i um mainly were uh the ones who were making sure that she was taken care of emotionally and every other uh way not even, you know, in her last days, he cared for her. Um, uh-huh. Even while he was, you know, he was working and, you know, in the middle of the day, come home and check to make sure she was okay and, uh-huh. you know, just making sure that she was all right. So, so yeah, definite love story. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that was, that's mm-hmm. definitely, that's awesome. Okay, well, um, just going to ask you one more question before we go to break. Um, why do you believe that so many people suffer in silence and choose not to seek professional counseling um, when they are going through their storms? 
Well, I think that, you know, it could be a combination of, of reasons. Uh, I kind of mentioned earlier, you know, unfortunately still a lot of people see mental health as this taboo um, this topic. It's a taboo yeah. subject. No one wants to really mention that they see a psychiatrist or a psychologist or quote-unquote a shrink. It's it's still... Um, you know, frowned upon or, or mm-hmm. like, what's wrong with you, you know, yeah. kind of thing. So um, it's certainly in, in different cultures, it, it, it's, well, I would say, worse, more taboo than others. But mm-hmm. um, I still don't believe that um, a lot of people feel comfortable mentioning that they're receiving counseling or they're seeing a therapist. So at times, uh, they may be very reluctant to even go to the doctor or even take their medication if they have mm-hmm. been prescribed medication for uh, whatever mental illness they are suffering from. So, you know, it's the fear of being judged. It's the fear that definitely in a professional environment, if someone were to find out that, uh, you know, you're suffering from, a, you know, a mental disorder, you know, you may be frowned upon or may not receive the promotions that you should receive because they may think that you're unstable. You know, so Mm -hmm. there's so many reasons why, uh, you know, people tend to suffer in silence. And it's very sad because I think that if you don't feel comfortable or you don't have the support, unfortunately, people suffer alone and they don't Mm -hmm. have that support. And we, you know, we see, unfortunately, that some, you know, uh, commit suicide because they become so depressed that they find a way out. So, you Mm -hmm. know, I just wanted to make sure that, you know, if I can provide assistance or, again, bring hope to someone by me telling my story, um, that's the reason why I wanted to make sure that I did that because it was um, at times, you know, a bit of a challenge to have a mother that, you know, kids were asking me, like, what's wrong with your mom? You know, why does your mom act this way? Why does she not come here and there and whatever? You know, so it was a lot of pressure. Um, they didn't know that those questions were pressuring me and causing me or to hurtful. feel a certain way. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah, exactly. So it was just the questions like, well, what's up with your mom? You know, but at the same time, you know, as a child, definitely as a young child, I didn't know what she had. We didn't know what she had. Right. So I couldn't even really answer the question. I'm like, I don't know, you know. Yeah. Um, so then you get, okay, is she like what's going on, you know, so it is so many things as to, I think there's so many reasons why, uh, you know, people tend to suffer in silence. It could be that they just don't know what it is going on with them, but they're in fear of even going to the doctor. Some people are afraid to go to the doctor of free, of, for the fear of what they may find out. Uh, yeah. So, you know, so there's numerous reasons, but I just want to provide the hope that you can seek the help. And for those that have family members that may be acting a little differently or, or they may have concerns, for go to the, I encourage you to go to the doctor with them because they will need that support. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Well, that's very true because um, we, you know, it's now, I mean, I, yeah, it could be me, but, um, I think that, you know, everybody talked about depression, um, getting anxiety drugs and, you know, Prozac mm-hmm. and things like that, but they never equated it to um, a mental illness. But now we know that depression is part of, you know, if you're depressed and, you know, something is, is wrong and, and, and now they're seeing that um, if depression is not um, treated, then, yeah, there is a very high rate of suicide. So, mm-hmm. um, yeah, so in the olden days, you're right, when someone says mm-hmm. that you have a mental illness, they're thinking of a totally different, you know, person. You're, yeah, I personally would think of somebody you just see walking the streets or something like that, right? But, right. Um, yeah, so that's where the taboo came from. But, yeah, mm-hmm. it's it's just a chemical imbalance, correct? <laughs> Exactly. It's exactly. Just a chemical imbalance. So um, there's nothing, nothing to taboo about it. It's just so. Yeah, mm-hmm. it's good to, you know, encourage, um, you know, our listeners that um, 
it's better to get the help. It's better to to feel good because I know that depression is like you said. Your mom wouldn't get up out of bed and wouldn't you know open the blinds or anything like that because yeah, that's what it is. You know, I've known a lot mm-hmm. of people that are depressed and they wake up in the morning and they want to die because they're, they're right. you know, they just don't they feel so much, in so much pain. So you don't have exactly. to live like that. You just go get some help, right? So. Exactly. You're right. Yes. So, right. We're, so that's what we're saying. Just um, go get help. There's nothing wrong. There's no stigma attached. You will feel much better. Okay. Right. So let's take a, a quick station break, and we will be right back with Dr. Sheila. Stay tuned. If you are listening to this broadcast, it means that you are hungry for growth, hungry for change, hungry for insights, revelation, and knowledge. Whatever you need in your life, you will receive it today. For the past 20 years, Myrna has been an entrepreneur. As past CEO of Royal Livery Limousine Service and now CEO of My Help's Coaching and Consulting Services, Myrna has achieved good success. Awarded Entrepreneur of the Year, Myrna knows what it takes to help you be successful. Myrna helps her coaching clients to design a practical plan to close the gap of where they are today and where they would like to be tomorrow. In business, relationships, health, or career goals, that is why Myrna is offering a free one-hour strategy session valued at $150, totally free. No strings attached. If you are listening right now, go to www.myrnayounghelps.com slash contact.us and sign up now for a free session with Coach Myrna. She has helped business owners and other clients just like you overcome their obstacles and set them on a path to success. Take advantage of this offer today. Go to www.myrnayounghelps.com slash contact dot us right now. Welcome back to the Mindset Transformation Radio Show. I'm your host, Coach Myrna, and we have been speaking with Dr. Sheila D. Williams, we can also call her Superwoman. She's she's accomplished quite <laughs> she's accomplished quite a lot of things in her life. An overachiever and um, super motivated, an author, speaker, a mental health counselor. Um, so as we um, go into the final minutes of her show. Um, Dr. Sheila, if you're able to tell the viewers one thing, what would you tell them? What would it be? I would tell them that nothing is impossible. (laughs) Nothing. That's our topic today. (laughs) Nothing is impossible. So, you know, you mentioned that my high school guidance counselor told me that college was not for me. So, okay, so you say that college is not for me. He encouraged me to uh, pursue the military. (laughs) I took the entrance exam for the, the, uh, what is it, the ASVAB. I uh, signed up for the ASVAB test and, 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 and scored relatively high on that. So I had all these recruiters calling me, uh, trying to get me into the military. So I obviously did not go in the military. I wanted to go to college. So, you know, you know, although someone may tell you no or you can't or that's not possible, don't believe them. If there is something that you want to accomplish and achieve, I don't care what it is, It there is – a hope there is possibility and anything that you want to do you can achieve it so if there's something you want to do just think about that thing that you want whatever it is that you want to accomplish and I say go for it because everything that I have wanted to accomplish I have accomplished thus far there have been trials and tribulations along the way it may not have happened as quickly or as soon as I wanted it to happen um, you know, uh, it may have been a project that I wanted to happen in a year, and it take me eight years. Um, but, you know, you may have to take a break and come back to it, come but you it. can yep. accomplish. Mm-hmm. Yes, you can yep. accomplish anything that you want to accomplish. It's possible. Yeah. Well, I think of a couple of things. First of all, when you're talking about that, we talk about I, I, I see how my tip of the week ties into that statement. Yeah, you're swimming a long-distance race, and, you know, Storms come up, and you're thinking mm-hmm. of turning back or quitting, but go right through. So that's awesome. Mm-hmm. Yeah, come back to it. Mm-hmm. 
And as you were also talking, I remember Les Brown, because he has a story like that. His guidance mm-hmm. his teacher told him that he was um, uh, learning disabled and that he mm-hmm. wouldn't be able to accomplish anything. And now he talks about the fact that he's a millionaire many times over. But his story right. is some, similar to that because he was, you know, they, they told him he couldn't learn learning disabled. <laughs> and that. Hey, wow. you know, be a carpenter or something. I think they told him that he would. Oh he, no! You know, learning was not for him. Yeah, the teachers. I don't know why guidance counselors tell teachers things like that, but I've been hearing this story so many times, where they they tell them that they can't do this and they just should do something else. And and what it does is actually motivates you to do just that. <laughs> that right. what somebody tells exactly. you things you can't do. Yeah. So mm-hmm. That is. Um, that is that's also amazing. So, what do you want your legacy to be? You know, just that uh, you know, again, that anything anything is possible. Nothing is impossible. That wow, you know, her my father had a sixth grade education. My mother suffered from clinical depression at the age of ten. I was cooking my own meals and and pretty much taking care of my own self. And, uh, you know, I had no money. I paid my way through college. I have no student loans. Uh, imagine that with a doctorate degree. Uh, you know, and Amazing. anything that you want to do is, a, is you know, it's, it's a comp- you can accomplish it. You know, I just want to be able to touch lives in a positive way, um, and I want to live life to the fullest. And in living life to the fullest, I think that for me, uh, that means that those in which um, I encounter people that I meet, whether professionally or personally, I want them to say that I touch them in a positive way. And, and I want my books to um, be a lifelong legacy uh, of me and how I live my life and for it you know, to be read by, you know, those who suffer in silence, for those who uh, want to give hope to others for those who have accomplished and uh, maybe not have, you know, have had the opportunity or chosen not to tell their own story, but to find, um, you know, that hope and and that gratification in reading my story. It helps them to be able to heal because I find that a lot of people are are not, um, you know, they're not healed. They're hurting or they're suffering because of secrets or, you know, past pain and past hurt. Uh, but, you know, sometimes even if you are still not comfortable telling your own story, if you read the story of someone else, it, it, can, it can bring some healing to you. So that is the yes. only legacy that I, that I want to leave, yes. Yes, that's awesome. And, and, mm-hmm. and, your, and the children's book is going to be um, very inspirational too because a lot of times you um, children form, they get their, their passion and their drive from right. some inspiration, um, you know, it's it's you don't want to be 50 and now getting the inspiration. A lot of times, it's good if you you know train train the child, train their mind early, make it pliable, right. let them realize that even though they might be in a situation where, like you were in, where you're mm-hmm. looking after yourself, your mom is not able, cable, you don't have a lot of money, you know, a child in that situation might mm-hmm. think, hey, you know what. I'm not going to be able to do anything. Maybe I'm going to be working at McDonald's or or something for the rest of my life. And, you know, there's Mm -hmm. no hope for me. And then they see that you, that's where you were from, and you're now a doctor and doing all that. Or you can even become president Mm -hmm. or something. And that is, is, you know, why Barack Obama's story is so so unreal. And, you know, that gives Mm -hmm. hope to a lot of a lot of children that, yeah, you can be anything you want. So Exactly. Yeah, so you just have to put your mind to it. And I also mm-hmm. like the fact when that you said, you know, you give things a time, but God doesn't work in your time. Um That's so right. you give something a time <laughs> and um and, and also something you said in the beginning of uh, people might think that your success is they see the the title and they see and they see that you've got the success. The, the success. Mm-hmm. They don't know mm-hmm. your struggle. And it reminds me mm-hmm. of something I read about um, Kevin Hart, that people are saying he's an overnight success, but it took him 19 years <laughs> to become right, an overnight right. success. <laughs> All the things that he went through 
and now he made $85 million just last year at a top entertainer. Oh, wow. But he, you know, he had to go through all that, and he didn't stop, right? Right. You know, think about it. He's a short guy, a short man, and people disrespected mm-hmm. him, and then, you know, he was black and all that. But he kept going, right. he kept going, he kept getting better, he kept learning. And now everywhere you go, there's a Kevin Hart. <laughs> it's amazing. He's right. <laughs> True. 19 years to be um, an overnight success. So that's awesome. Well, wow. I have I have thoroughly enjoyed our conversation because we're in the same space. We're in the yes. space of 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 um, giving hope and encouragement to you know mm-hmm. people that we come into contact with, either through the radio program or speaking or coaching or, or, you know, we're leaving something positive behind. And that is always yeah. good. You're right. It does bring mm-hmm. blessings right back to you when you give. So right. thank you so much for sharing your story with me and uh, my audience. Thank you. Um, <laughs> now, how can um, uh, my audience get in touch with you if they want to hire you for speaking or um to get a copy of your book. Oh, yeah, definitely. Um, the, I would say the one-stop shop would be my website. If you go to www.drsheilabwilliams.com. Okay, okay. mm-hmm. It's my name, drsheilabwilliams.com. No spaces, no periods. And uh, so it's D-R-S-H-E-I-L-A, B as in David, and then williams.com. And it will have my email address, my contact for my phone number, and then also if you wanted to purchase the book, there is a link um, on there for you to just um, hit that link and it will take you directly, I believe, to uh, maybe even Amazon or Barnes & Noble. Um, But the book is available pretty much everywhere. Um, But, yeah, if if you go through the website, you can contact me and it will have all of my information there. Okay. Awesome. Mm-hmm. And if they want to hire you for a speaker, that's, you have a link there as well? Yes, definitely. My uh, okay. email address and my uh, contact number where you can reach me at is available on that website, drsheilabwilliams.com. Mm-hmm. drsheilabwilliams.com. Awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Now, my yep. mother's keeper is a book that you should read. It has, has a lot of, I'm pretty sure, has a lot of inspirational um, messages for you as to how you can become successful in spite of your circumstances. So, um, again, we thank you for tuning in. Um, my website, if you wanted to contact me to be either to be a guest on the show or to get a copy of my book, Out of the Snares, A Story of Hope and Encouragement, or if you wanted um, any kind of um, coaching, one-on-one coaching, I still do that. My website is www.MyrnaYoungHelps. That's M-Y-R-N-A-Y-O-U-N-G-H-E-L-P-S dot com. If you wanted to get a um, listen to this show again, it will be on my YouTube channel. Um, just search under My Helps, which is M-Y-H-E-L-P-S. And you can also get um, a listing of all my other shows. They are on my YouTube channel. So once again, thank you for tuning in to the Mindset Transformation Show. We are here every week at the same time, 5 o'clock, where I will bring you exciting, inspirational guests like Dr. Sheila. So have a good night.